right, today we're going to talk about some special segments that occur in circles. And our objective is that we will be able to use properties of arcs, chords, and tangents of circles. So our first special property is that if we have an intersection, intersecting tangent and radius, they're going to be perpendicular. So here's our radius, here's the tangent, they form a right angle. And we know they're perpendicular because they made a right angle. So in these examples, we're going to determine if AB is tangent to circle C. We know BC is our radius because it goes from the center to the outside, and AB is what we're trying to determine if it's tangent. If it is, that means that this has a right angle, which would make this a right triangle. So we're going to use our Pythagorean theorem. We want to know is C squared, is it equal to A squared plus B squared? So remember that this would be the right angle. So across from that, that's our hypotenuse, which will be C. So 5 squared, does it equal 4 squared plus 3 squared? 5 squared is 25. 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, 16 plus 9 will give us 25, which is equal to 25. So AB is tangent. You try it for number 2, pause the video, and then come back to check your answer. One hundred does not equal ninety. This for this therefore, sorry, A B is not tangent. Intersecting tangent segments are congruent. We have segment R S and segment R T. They are both tangents intersecting at the same point. So 3x minus 2 would equal 7. Move the 2 to the other side. 3x equals 9, which means x would equal 3. Next, we're going to look at some rules about chords. Chords are congruent if and only if the intersected arcs, intercepted arcs are congruent. So if this arc here and this arc here are congruent, then the chords are also congruent. And vice versa, if we know the chords are congruent, then we know the arcs are congruent. So here, PN is congruent to PM, which means this arc PN would be congruent to arc PM. So we know arc PM, its measure, would also equal 147 degrees. And since it wants us to find all the minor arcs, we also need the measure of MN. Our whole circles, 360 degrees, minus 147 for MP, minus 147 for PN, leaves us with 66 degrees for the measure of MN. All 
our next rule, chords are congruent if and only if they're equidistant from the center. So let's say here's our center. From here to a chord where it makes the right angle, this chord, this makes a right angle. If these are congruent, then the entire chord is congruent to this entire chord. So in our example, if ST is 60 and VU is 60, so the chords are congruent, that means the chords are congruent, then they're also equidistance. Equidistance means equal distance. So 5x squared would have to equal 45. Divide both sides by 5. x squared equals 9. Square root both sides, we get x equals 3. And our final chord property. A perpendicular bisector of a chord goes through the center of the circle. So this means it would have to be a diameter or radius. So here's our center. If we have a chord across here and this goes through the center, it will bisect here and here, and it must be perpendicular. So if CE is 3, what's AE? Well, BD went through the center, and it's perpendicular. Therefore, AE and AC are going to be congruent, and therefore AE must also equal 3. Now remember what we said earlier. Or in general, if the chords are the same, the arcs that intercept them are also going to be the same. So if A to C, this whole thing here, is 100, how much is AB and BC? Well, the measure of AB going to equal the measure of BC because they came from congruent pieces of a chord. If the whole thing's 100 degrees, then they each must be 50 degrees. You all have had a lot of practice with me giving you the prompt for your summary, so this time I want you to write a summary on your own. That's all for today. See you in class.